This is the best time of the day. Right away in the morning, there's the first boat at the boat ramp parking lot. And it's another beautiful day. And we're down here at Bismarck here, Missouri River, which you look at the Missouri River in the springtime, just a tremendous fishery. You look below the Garrison Dam tail race all the way down to Lake Oahe, just a tremendous stretch of river that really fires up in the spring. Being able to grow up here and run up and down the river and be able to chase these walleyes has been a blessing. And to have my buddy Jason here be able to do it this morning is, is beyond another one. So let's get out here and look for them anyways. Yeah, that's the cool thing about this is that this is such a, it's just such a buzzing area in the springtime. You look, you look, you know, just all the people that live in Bismarck and Man and all the great anglers down in this part of the world. There's a lot of good, good right. fishermen in this part of the world. It's one of my favorite places to come each spring. You know, we're just kind of bouncing around here. You know, the thing to maybe point out is that we're finding fish with the side imaging since we can cover so much water and look over spots so quickly. Find them with the side imaging, and then after we find the fish, then we try to reposition and, and just use the anchor mode on the trolling motor, and that's when we're using the active target. And so we're using the active target in the scout mode, which, you know, as far as forward mode, down mode, scout mode, if it's a situation where fish show up really good on side imaging, that's a really good situation to use scout mode because those fish will just pop off the bottom but it's hard to find fish with active target. And so use the side imaging to find fish, then use the scout mode to cast specifically at a fish or a pot of fish. And sometimes too, you know, you'll see fish crawl through on the side, you know, when you're spot locked or anchored up with your side imaging as well. You know, you'll just see a line that goes across the side of the screen, but uh, you know, they, they both, you know, side imaging and, and the forward facing sonar, they really complement each other. They both make each other better. That's a good fish. There we go. Boy, is that a wonderful feeling, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing you set the hook like that, Jason. I'll switch your spots here. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when the rod moves back oh. and forth about a foot and a half each head Catch shape. fish on a jig like this. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice oh, walleye. Beautiful walleye. Boy, oh, that's a great way to start the morning, huh? Uh huh. Oh, all right. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Great fish, Jason. Pull this girl up and show yeah. her off. All right. Gotta love this place in the spring. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that is a gorgeous fish. It's just awesome when a plan comes together. <laughs> you look for the fish, you find the fish, you cast at the fish, and they bite. Let her go. There she goes. You know, I think this is maybe something to point out too. You know, we were out here scouting around yesterday and we caught some fish shallow and we caught some fish up into, you know, three feet of water, four feet of water, casting right up on the sandbar. And you know, we, were, we were seeing fish on side image and we'd mark and we'd pull around on them like, wow, they're eight, 10, 12 feet, you know, a little bit deeper than what we anticipated because the sun was out. And then we noticed through the day, the water probably dropped probably over a foot. And so that's the thing is you can't make up your mind river fishing because things change. And you know, water drops and these fish are gonna pull out. And so we're finding the fish a touch deeper than probably what you'd anticipate in the springtime. You know, 10 feet of water, Seems to be kind of that magic depth where we're starting to see a lot of fish. And I think it's just a deal where this water's dropping and these fish are pulling down into spots. You know, that's the thing, the water drops, the current changes, you're gonna have to almost kind of relearn your spots every day. The main reason to fall in love with the river is how simple it is. So we're using side scan, just going along these sandbars, current breaks, rock jetties, really simple fishing. It's all sand, mud bottom typically. Now there is some rock and some wood, but for the most part, you're, you're scanning on sand. So these fish stick out like sore thumbs. And it's, it's really simple to be able to go out there and use a jig and a minnow or a jig and a plastic, just to be able to go out there, warm up for the year essentially, and then warm your eyes up also on your electronics. Got one? Yeah. Oh yeah. Here, I'll look at the net here for you. This one wants to be a smallmouth bass, Jason. I don't know. <laughs> they got some spunk. That's oh. fun too. Is oh yeah. 
you know, you get them in this current and they just fight nice. There Help you out there. there. Awesome. Well, that would be a great uh, fish to eat. Nope. Great taco fish? Yes, it would. <laughs> Perfect. Let's get them out here. Oh, just chomped that impulse. Beautiful. That one was actually burning the reel, Jason. Burning and letting it pause. So it seems like that that bait being horizontal, they like it. That's the thing with these awesome, paddle awesome. tails. You can fish them a lot of different ways. Right, you know right. So I'm gonna get this one back and hopefully catch its mother. Bye bye. Yep, know. there yeah. he is. Okay. Oh. Jason's just a fishing machine. Well, let's uh, bring him on here. Just a good eater. You know, they get in that stronger current though, and they just, that's what's so fun about this. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, just a great, great eating fish. That's a fish that would look great in a live well. Oh yeah, Jason, that's another great eater. This fish is, uh, Lucky day. <laughs> no tacos for him. There's a few more out there. Yeah, seeing them out there. Oh yeah, a few more out there. You know, when you're just sitting in one spot, you know, whether you're spot locked or using anchor mode or anchored up, your, your sight imaging gets distorted. But you can see fish come through on the side and you know, with, with side imaging, it's not like you have a cone angle that shoots a very big swath out to the side of the boat. It's more like a, like a, like a, just a razor. I mean, just a, a real narrow signal that shoots to the side. But when fish get in that, you'll see here how they're crawling across the screen. Almost like worms crawling across the screen. Those are fish here right to the side of the boat. Yeah, and once you really begin to look at that, you'll be able to judge how fast those fish are actually moving through your yeah. area yeah, absolutely. and you can actually learn to judge your cast to either put it in front of them put yeah it... if they're just on there for a little while they're moving right if they're on it. there for a long time they're just they're just sitting there it means they're just sitting there waiting for it i think the other thing that maybe is worth mentioning you know somebody's just trying to learn side imaging is that when you have your range like right now i have a hundred foot range if you see fish at 30 feet, 40 feet, whatever it is, you know, and it really is dependent on the depth of water, they're closer to you than what it shows on the range. Right. And so if you see fish at say 30 feet and you're in 10 feet of water, the reality is that those fish are in say 23, 24 feet. It's just for whatever reason, they're closer than what the range says. And a lot of people, especially range at 100, 100 seems like a big number, but a 100 foot cast realistically that isn't much effort behind a cast. So once you begin to actually judge a fish at 40, a fish at 60, a fish at 80, you're gonna spend a lot more time putting your bait in front of fish's faces instead of guessing and blind casting, essentially. You know, when these fish come up into the river, obviously they're coming up into the river to spawn. And once these fish dump their eggs, you know, these fish will stick around the river for a little while before a lot of them will filter back into Lake Oahe. But you know, finding fish on the Missouri River in particular is all about finding that slower water, those current seams outside of the main flow, you know, where these fish can just rest and wait for food to blow by them. And so sometimes we found fish in slack water, but a lot of times you're just looking for slower water. You're not in the main channel where that current velocity is at its strongest. And a lot of the current breaks, a lot of these current seams are created by sandbars. And so if you can just find slower water, which a lot of times you can physically see it, and you can definitely feel it on the trolling motor when you're running the boat, but you're just finding that slower water. If you can find, say, six, seven, eight feet of water, of slower water behind or next to a sandbar where you just have that reduced flow, a lot of times that's where these fish will be laying. And sometimes these fish will be up in one, two, three feet of water right up where the sun can hit their back. Sometimes they'll be, you know, they'll be a little bit deeper. Sometimes they'll be at the front of the hole. Sometimes they'll be in the back of the hole. Sometimes the more aggressive fish will be up shallow where that water's faster over the top of the sandbar. But a lot of times you're just spending a lot of time just driving around trying to find good spots, you know, and I would say that's a big part of the river 
And sometimes on the river, you do have to bounce around a little bit to find fish. Sometimes you'll just bounce around until you find a big pot of fish that are biting. Sometimes it's just one here, one there, and they add up. But uh, you do have to move around sometimes. We're gonna spot lock, Jason? Yep, yep, yep. Hoo! Set the hook into a brick wall right there. Yeah. That's why we do this. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> oh, that was sweet. Was nice heavy fish. Oh, yeah. Took off on you right away, too. Oh, yeah. Boy, that fish was fighting hard in that current. Get him in here. Oh, there we go. beautiful. Nice, nice, nice. Beautiful fish. That almost looks like a pre spawn female. I was going to say. It's a little fat. We'll check her out a here. Little belly on her. I wonder the way this spring is going. I wonder if some of these fish aren't going to dump their eggs at all. With how fast this spring, like we talked about, who yeah. knows? That might be the that might that's be a the, common case. This that's the jig. Well, yeah, look at that. Got any left in her? Yeah, she's yeah. still green. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Nice it's a beautiful walleye. fish. This is what it's all about, right there. It sure is, huh? <laughs> Nothing better than getting out here and letting your buddy catch all the fish. <laughs> We're fishing your spots. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There she goes. Kind of show you what we're doing here. Which I tell you what, for current, I'm a big, big fan of these tungsten jigs. This is a tungsten jig here from Northland Fishing Tackle. This has been one of the hottest jigs this year by far at least in the walleye fishing world but i think the big thing is you get a little bit smaller profile for that plastic but it just finds bottom just you get a lot of sensitivity but in current especially you cut down on the profile but you increase the weight you just find that bottom and just basically just skipping it along this is that eye candy see how stretchy it is it just has a lot of action in the water you know, besides the heavier weight of tungsten, the other thing I like about this particular jig, it's got a very sharp, stout hook that doesn't bend out. I mean, you just can't bend it out. And so, imagine if you're fishing around wood, where you want a hook to bend out at times, it might not be the answer for that. But when you're using plastics especially, or even live bait, and especially if you're casting away from the boat, and you just need to crack that fish, <laughs> that hook doesn't budge. And so, just a great hook for hooking fish. You know, so the last couple of years I've been running aqua traction in my boat, which is just a flooring material that's non-slippery, it's very easy to clean, it's very comfortable to stand on all day. And that's how we met Cade, who we're fishing with today. And so a couple of years ago, these two young kids kind of came out of nowhere and really left a big impression in the fishing industry, especially here in the Dakotas. So Cade and his partner Tanner, they started this aqua traction of North Dakota. And it's really been popular for a lot of anglers that spend a lot of time standing in the boat, especially. It's fun to meet young people that are getting into the industry. And it's really fun to meet young people that are doing it right. And so. Uh, Cade and Tanner, I mean, they have a bright future in this industry. They're just a couple of great kids that are doing a lot of great things here in the fishing industry in North Dakota, and they're starting to get noticed. And so it's fun to spend a day on the water with Cade, basically in his natural habitat. The Missouri River is one of his favorite places. Got one. On. Yep. Net. <laughs> really good one. Okay, I'm gonna switch spots with yes, you here. I would love that. <laughs> Boy, that's a good fish. Should be a really nice fish. Should be coming up. See so if you can steer them out this way. Not as big as I thought. It's in that current. That's a good fish though. There we go. There we go. Nice. Nice, Sweet. nice, nice walleye. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, okay. 
How far up? Oh yeah, there's a bunch of them moving through in the side imaging right now. Look at how he ate it too. Oh yeah. She. Oh, <laughs> nice work. That's a beautiful fish. Beautiful. Beautiful Missouri River walleye. Back to the depths. The shallow sandy depths. Get some more? Yeah. That was a good one. So when we're out looking for spots, essentially for walleyes on the Missouri River, it's obviously a river system, so current is a huge factor when it comes to finding these walleyes. While you're driving up and down the main channel of the Missouri River, there's gonna be a bunch of nooks and crannies and sandbars essentially is the main, main structure that we're looking for. And what we're looking for is that sandbar to come up enough in the water column essentially to slow up the current just behind it to the side of it. It's typically on the inside or an outside turn of a river per se or behind a rock jetty, something like that. And we don't want, we don't want them to be too deep, but we're looking, honestly, these walleyes on a sunny day will be up in two feet. And then on some days, if they're, if they're in a mood, they can be out in 15. So you're really just looking on your side imaging, trusting your electronics, making sure that you're casting at fish. And then as soon as these fish move, they're moving a lot with this current. We just position the boat different just to get a different cast at them and always stay on the fish. Got him. On? Yep. Good. This is a good one. Good one. Yep. Let's get that net for you. Gotta love that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the best tick ever. They get in that current too, and that just gives it another switch you spots this time. Another level of horsepower, you know what? Oh yeah. She's got some play in her. Yeah, she does. See her here. We like when they stay down. <laughs> Come on, big Moment girl. Of suspense. <laughs> this is a good fish. Oh yeah, has to be. Oh yeah, look at those heads. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I don't like it when they do that. <laughs> she liked uh, She liked what you gave her. <laughs> oh, come here. I'm just gonna back up here. Oh yeah, let's take a step back, lift that rod tip. I'm gonna reach. Hey, hey all right. Nice fish, nice. Jason. Here, we'll just keep her in the water, awesome. keep her awesome. wet there, and we'll show her off. Wow. Oh. <laughs> That's that a beautiful awesome fish, fish, huh? Slide her to that side of the oh. boat for you. Awesome. You know, that's the thing is, we saw these fish on the side imaging. We saw them on the scout boat on the active target. We kept repositioning, trying to change angles. We could not get these fish to bite. And finally, this girl ate. Let's show her off. This is a good fish. Oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nice fish. All right, can you hand me the pliers there real quick? Yes, sir. Here. We started off throwing just an impulse paddle tail, which is just kind of a classic bait in this part of the world. Then we switched it up to this eye candy, which a little bit different. I'll talk about it in a little bit here. It's not your traditional plastic in the sense that it's elastic plastic. So it's a lot softer, absorbs scent, and it's pretty durable. It's not for everything, but I'll talk about some situations where I like it, but this big girl loved it. Let's get her in the water. That's a dandy. Good fish, Jason. That is what made this river famous, huh? There are so many big fish in this system. It's unbelievable. Look at that. Isn't that just massive? Oh, goodness, <laughs> goodness, goodness. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> How many times could you do that a day? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a million? Yeah. Well, let's do it a few more. Yeah, here, let me show you here what I'm doing here real quick. And, and this is just walleye fishing 101. So I'll show you what I started out with. That's just an impulse paddle tail, which, you know, just basically, you know, white chartreuse, you know, stuff that's, you know, three to 
three and a half inches long, slender, paddle tail. I mean, this stuff catches a lot of walleyes. But I'll show you where this is different. So this is just your traditional PVC plastic. Now, I like this because it, it puts off a lot more vibration. It does move more water. It's, it's more rigid, okay? This here, you can see here, it's just really stretchy and soft. And so it doesn't have the water displacement that PVC plastic does. This elastic plastic has different properties. It floats, it's very soft, it's very subtle. But the other thing about it is it, it really does a good job of absorbing scents. And so what I do is I just, I just store it in this, these Gulp Alive containers. I like that, that, form, that particular formula. And this plastic just absorbs it. And so I switch back and forth. A lot of times on a good bite, I'll, I'll go with the PVC plastic. But if it's a little bit tougher bite, that's when I'll switch to the elastic. And also too, you know, and then obviously we, you know, we saw these fish ignoring us. I mean, we were casting, casting, casting at these fish, switched up to this, got bit with that big fish. But these also work great on spinner harnesses and drop shots in particular because they float and they're very soft. I mean, you can just thread it on a, on a crawler harness and uh, same thing, you just catch a lot of fish. It's called eye candy. It's new from Northland Fishing Tackle.